Thank you so much. Okay, now let's move on to our third speaker. I haven't had a chance to hear from Carolyn for a little while. I think the last time I heard you speak was over in our other building, and it was the day you played the piano. Oh, It's been a little while. So I like hearing from Carolyn. It's a lot of fun. Um, her speech, so let me kind of read her little introduction here. So Carolyn has learned in life that it is better to embrace what you may not like, <coughs> learn to love it, and then be grateful for it. So this is her project number three from the storytelling story manual title, Embrace It, Love It, and Be Grateful For It. This is a five to seven minute speech. Please welcome up. This past Saturday, we had an event at our house, which isn't very uncommon. We're always having events at our house. In this case, we were inviting around 40 to 50 people to our home to hear a concert pianist, age 15 years old, Talon Smith from Fresno, California. <coughs> he had won the gold medal in the Junior Gina Bachauer Piano Competition, which is an international piano competition when he was just 13 years old. And so naturally, since it's in our house, I'm the mom, I've been gone a while, I've left the home to our, my husband, three boys, and my daughter, who's more of a creative than a cleaning person. <laughs> I would say that the house was in a bit of a, well, chaotic state. So, of course, I'm up early, it's all hands on deck, we're going to be cleaning this house, we're going to get it ready for this concert tonight. My son gets up, he's 21 years old, and the first thing he says is, and you may have heard this phrase at your house one or two times, but this isn't my stuff. Why do I have to clean it up? And my mom attitude kicks in, and it wasn't one of my finer moments, and I'm saying, well, you're 21, you can either choose to live at the house or go live somewhere else where maybe people don't live size 12, where, leave size 12 shoes on the floor everywhere. <laughs> Then my daughter, who's observing this behavior back and forth, she says to me, and to Alex, in her observation, she said, you know, I go to a lot of homes, and I've noticed there's two kinds of homes. There's a home where everything's nice and neat and orderly, and people don't really live in those kinds of houses. But at our house, we really love living here. And that's evidenced by shoes, backpacks, a coat on the back of the chair, some dishes in the sink. We are a busy family living in our house. And I loved that perspective because I actually really kind of like having my son living at home and <laughs> I'm okay with that. But I realized that there are things in life that bug us and we can choose to embrace it, to love it, and to be grateful for it. In the process of raising eight kids, I've had my share of messes. And I'm surprised at actually how messy my house really was at times. And I was reminded of this when I went and tended my four grandsons. Mm -hmm. And those grandsons are ages seven, five, three, and one. <laughs> and I actually raised boys that were exactly that distance apart from each other. My last four are boys. And somehow I'd really forgotten the speed at which they can completely tear the house apart. <laughs> it is with lightning speed. And I was reminded of this when I watched a video of one of my son's piano competitions. And he was playing this amazing concerto, fingers flying all over the keyboard. He was about age 11. Then the camera pans to the rest of the room in the house. Oh, no. <laughs> it seriously looked like some sort of bomb had gone off of papers, <laughs> toys, laundry everywhere. And I thought the same thing about, uh, about this pianist that was at our house, that that kind of intense playing and beautiful <laughs> artistry can come at a cost. And the cost can be two things. One, what if that gifted pianist actually grew up in a family where they don't even like music? And I do know the situations where that's happened, where the, the friend of my, one of my kids came to the house and said, you know, I would love to play the piano well, but my family didn't like music and we had to have the piano in the garage so that no one could hear it. The only way he learned his piano skills was listening to a YouTube video and then trying to recreate it himself. Versus this pianist. 
that was at our house on Saturday, age 15. His mother had found a piano at a garage sale, happened to be driving by, it was 100 bucks, thought she'd buy it, brought it home, and her son is an extraordinary pianist. Not only is he extraordinary at the works he plays of others, he played a piece he himself has composed, finished at the age of 14. We were completely awestruck at what he was able to accomplish. I, I've never seen fingers move down a piano keyboard so rapidly. Along with learning to like it, love it, and embrace it, my husband's a drummer. I don't know if you know this, but drumming is not a quiet pastime <laughs> at all. And he loves nothing more than following uh, rock band groups. He talks about them, he knows their tour, he knows who is the lead drummer, who is the lead singer, he knows all of that. And he could dream of nothing other than to have his own drum set. Well, at the time that he got his first drum set, the only place it could go was in our bedroom. He could wake <laughs> up and admire it, enjoy the <laughs> cymbals, the hardware of that drum, the Bubinga African wood it was made out of. I began at that time to learn to love it, to embrace it, and really appreciate that he's so passionate about drums. His current set, it took him at least a year to design the bass drum head with the Zeppelin from Led Zeppelin's group is emblazoned on it. He got certain lights so that he could stand back with his remote control and admire the lighting of those <laughs> drums at the end of the day. And then there are those grandkids of mine. They are busy. I just wanted their eyes to finally close so there wasn't one more thing they would see and think, how can I possibly destroy it? <laughs> they were cutting their clothes, they were cutting anything that was in sight, they were throwing things in all sorts of different directions. But at the end of the day, I thought, I love their curiosity and insatiable appetite to know how everything works. To know what happens when it's thrown, crushed, stepped on, eaten. <laughs> and those are the kind of people I love to be around because life's never dull. There's always something, something to learn. And I've learned to embrace the fact that my husband loves his remote control lights and that my kids embrace life. They're always looking for new opportunities, things to discover, things to explore. And I am all for learning to love it, learning to embrace it, and learning to be grateful for all of it.